uh, you can pretty much throw the stats out the window. Both teams are going to uh, play with every, all their heart and soul. Just the rivalry. The in-state rivalry. The rivalry. You know, anytime you have an in-state rivalry. This is the Battle for Brookings Preview Show. Hello and welcome to the USD vs. SDSU football preview show. I'm your host, Devin Reiners. We've got player and coach interviews from both teams, game analysis, and we'll tell you about the lost years. But first, some history of this great rivalry. USD and SDSU have faced off on the gridiron 110 times. SDSU leads the series 52, 51, and 7. The two teams played their first game in 1889, the game ended in a 6-6 tie. They didn't play again until 1900. USD won 11 of the first 13 matchups. The other two games ended in a tie. SDSU got their first win in the series in 1919 in a game played in Sioux Falls. From 1946 through 2003, the Yotes and Jacks played every season. In some seasons, they played twice. Since 1990, South Dakota State has won 18 of the 21 matchups, including the last seven. From 2004 to 2011, the two teams didn't play each other because SDSU had made the transition from Division II to Division I, while USD chose to remain in Division II. We call those the lost years, and we'll have more on that later in the show. After USD had moved to Division I and joined the Missouri Valley Football Conference in 2012, the two programs resumed the storied rivalry and they've played each year since. This season, USD is four and five overall, three and three in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They've been given the nickname Cardiac Coyotes because every game seems to go down to the wire. Three games have gone to double overtime. The Coyotes began the season with a trip to Albuquerque to take on New Mexico. After taking a 14 to seven lead, the Lobos rallied off 31 straight points en route to a 48-21 victory. The Yotes split the next two games, both in double overtime. After trailing by 21 in the fourth quarter to Weber State, USD came roaring back to win 52-49. The next week, South Dakota lost to North Dakota 47-44, despite leading by 17 going into the fourth quarter. After a 10-point loss at Youngstown, USD rallied off three straight wins against Northern Iowa, Indiana State, and Illinois State. The Yotes then lost two heartbreakers to Western Illinois and Southern Illinois. South Dakota State comes into the game with a 6-3 overall record and 5-1 in the Valley. They began the year with a trip to Fort Worth to take on TCU. After SDSU took an early 17-7 lead, the game became a complete shootout. TCU would ultimately end up winning 59-41. The Jacks then beat Drake but lost to Cal Poly. After the loss to Cal Poly, the Jacks started rolling, winning four games in a row including a 19-17 win in Fargo against rival NDSU. The Jacks were then upset by Illinois State, but defeated Missouri State last week. Coming up after the break, we sit down with players and coaches from both squads. Stay with us. What do I like about USD? I like that they have a lot of spirit and guts to come up against SDSU. It's 90 miles away from Brookings. Um, I mean, their dome is pretty cool. I think that's about all they've got going for them. <laughs> um, I don't know. Besides the pictures of people having fun, I really don't know. <laughs> not anything that I can think of on hand, honestly. Not really. I mean, they have a good med school, but there's also more SDSU students at USD Med School than USD students. So, I mean, it's their med school, but there's more of us there. So they have a great programs and stuff like that. They have a beautiful campus. Um, they have great on-student attendance for everything that they do. Not really. They share the same state, that's about it. <laughs> I have a friend that goes there. Other than that, no. <laughs> not really. I mean, I have a friend that goes there and plays football, but that's about it. So no, not really. Welcome back. Collins Chalop is here to tell us about the key players we should look out for on Saturday. Collins? Thanks, Devin. Let's start off with my top three players to watch for the Jackrabbits. Junior tight end Dallas Goddard is not a wide receiver, but he leads the team with 69 receptions and over 1,000 receiving yards. He has had 
a receiving touchdown in seven of nine games with a total of 10. He looks to keep the defense honest and open up the passing game for his fellow pass catchers. Junior wide receiver Jake Winicky has already been trouble for the Coyotes in the past, posting over 100 yards and one touchdown each time he has faced the Oats. Winicky leads the team in receiving touchdowns with 14 and looks to add to his totals this weekend. Redshirt freshman Christian Roseboom will, all, will have his hands full with the Coyotes' up-tempo spread offense, but should be ready for the challenge. He is the team's leading tackler with 85 total tackles, second in tackles for loss with five, third in sacks with three sacks, and tied for most interceptions and forced fumbles with two each. The Jackrabbits lean on this linebacker to make impact plays, slow down opposing offenses, and be an anchor for the defense. My top three players for USD are Chris Strebler, Miles Bergner, and Trevor Bauman. This is, this is junior Chris Strebler's first season as the starting quarterback for the Coyotes. Strebler is the team's leading passer with over 1,500 passing yards and leading rusher with just under 700 rushing yards. He also has a total of 25 touchdowns on the season. His, his success is key for the Coyotes getting a win Saturday. Senior Trevor Bauma is the Coyotes starting tailback. He's the second leading rusher on the team with over 640 yards and most all-purpose yards with over 790. Bauma will be counted on to keep the Coyotes offense balanced with a solid rushing game and keep pressure off Strebler. Senior Miles Bergner has been clutch all season long, leading with the most field goals made in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Bergner not only does the field goal, punting, and kickoff duties, but does it at a high level of production and is regarded as one of the best kickers in the conference. He has made 14 of 17 field goals and pinned opponents within, with punts inside the 20 12 times. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to speak with a coach from each school ready to come face to face. We look at every game differently, and we, we you know, you, you always pay attention to the past. You look at the, the, the last year's film, uh, but with the coaching change down there, there'll be very little of that. Uh, you know, you should have some confidence built in if you've had some success against a team, but in a rivalry game, records are thrown out most of the time, the location is thrown out most of the time, and you need to be ready to play your best football, and I, I think our guys will be ready to do that. This week's really no different in, in how we prepare. Obviously, the, the hype around it is, is quite a bit higher. Um, you know, anytime you have an in-state rivalry, rivalry game in general, um, there's going to be that added, added element. Yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of really good players. Their two interior defensive linemen are, are you know, some of the best in the league. They, they go against a really good offense every day in practice. So you know, they go against a team that's going to expose their weaknesses, and then they can work on that. I also spoke to players from both teams about how this game is different and what the rivalry means to them. It's a Missouri Valley football game, so it's just as important as, you know, when Missouri State, you know, we got to win, uh, you know, if you want to hold the top, be top in the conference. So uh, don't really look at it as a rivalry. Um, they might, which is fine, but uh, we just look at it as another Missouri Valley football conference game. Um, you, definitely, you definitely have a, maybe a little extra edge during the week, knowing that's a bigger game and it's a bigger thing for the community as well. I mean, for us, it's just another game throughout the week, and there is a little bit of rivalry, obviously, rivalry, obviously but with the community and stuff, you know it's going to be a big atmosphere, and you know that it's important to get that W for everyone. Um, you know, rivalry game from or not from South Dakota, you know, you kind of get built into the rivalry, and it becomes important to you as a person and as a player, so chip on my shoulder, definitely. The week came around that we were preparing for SDSU. Uh, the mojo of the team kind of just changed. Everybody kind of got in that ang anger mentality, you could say, and it became such a serious fact. And football's a fun sport, but at this point it was more uh, to the point of we really want to win this game and the importance of the rivalry. It'll be a packed game, so I think that's motivation all the way, honestly. Uh, it's more fun to play in front of a really packed stadium than one that's kind of quiet, you know, and I think that it's motivating to a lot of our guys. Uh, I don't see it being any pressure towards any of anybody on our team, but motivation is definitely something that's necessary in a game like this. Just today at practice, you can kind of feel the energy. Um, you can tell it's a, you know, big week, not just because it's SDSU, but because of our season's on the line. So, you know, I think just the rivalry gives it, you know, a little extra motivation. So it's been some good energy at practice. You know, going up to the new stadium, it's going to be a lot of fans there. It's going to be a real cool atmosphere. So, you know, you take it as another game, but at the same time, you got to kind of get yourself up for the big rivalry. 
Miles Bergner has collected many conference awards throughout his career, and he's the all-time points scorer in USD history. But Haley Westfall found out what many people don't know about the senior kicker. Haley? That's right, Devin. I got a chance to talk with Miles about his theater major and his football career. Here's what he had to say. My dad was a, uh, is a professor at the University of Colorado. Well, actually, he teaches uh, theater scenic design. So I grew up kind of in that world. Um, it, was, it was a big uh, change for me when I got here to actually do it myself. But I originally started out as a criminal justice major. Um, and I realized that that, you know, no, no dogging on them, but it was a little bit boring. Um, some of the classes that were required for it sounded just a little scary. So I switched over to theater uh, my freshman year. Um, and, you know, I fell in love with it. It's, it's really awesome. Um, it's really creative. It's really, uh, it's really a great experience. I've, I've uh, got a show coming up in spring now, um, Six Characters in Search of an Author. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, um, you know, living the life of being a, being a creative artist now. I am, the, uh, I am one of the lighting design, sound design students. Um, a lot of what you guys do, actually. But um, uh, I also have built shows. Um, I have, I, I'm not really in the acting or directing part of that. I'm too scared. Um, but uh, when it comes to behind the scenes stuff, uh, whether it's sound, lighting, or uh, scenic, or building, things like that, um, that's where you can usually find me, in the, either in the shop or in the lighting, the lighting corner. Um, so I, I do a lot of things for shows, um, not so much in the fall because uh, I'm obviously kicking footballs as a coyote, but um, in the spring I really load up and I um, start to lend a hand over there as much as I can. Thanks Haley. Coming up after the break, we'll give you our keys to the game. Stay with us. It, there's not really anything I like about them. The school spirit, like I mean, um, you can kind of get along with anybody there. All my cousins go there. <laughs> my true feelings about SDSU, well, my husband is an SDSU grad. I like how close it is to home because USD is farther away from me. I have a lot of friends that go there. That's the only difference. Uh, that'd probably be the only other thing that I would like about them. Um, I don't know. I can't really say I like much. the color blue. <laughs> I don't know if there is anything. I just have some family and friends that go there, and I know it's a good school, too, just like USD. So... What I like about SDSU is their city itself. It's got a lot to do in SDSU up there in Berkings. Uh, their football games are fun, I've heard. I've never even gone, but uh, I've heard that they're really fun. Um, you know, I really haven't been up there too much, but I know that I love it here more than there. Welcome back. The game is being played in the newly renovated Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium, formerly known as Coughlin Alumni Stadium. The stadium opened this season and seats around 19,340 fans. Additions to the venue include additional seating, club seating, and suites. Head coach John Stigelmeyer says a sellout crowd could really tip the balance of the game in the Jacks' favor. I'm joined here by KAOR radio announcers Joshua Earl and James Hagedorn. They'll be telling you everything you need to know about this week's rivalry game. All right, so the red zone is a key area for both teams, but in different ways. Yeah, in particular for USD, I mean, the red zone offense has been one of their main uh, points this season, really been a lot of uh, success for them. Scored 25 out of 27 times within the red zone. Uh, just had that uh, not able to convert uh, score last weekend, and also that fumble on the one yard line by Balma against Western Illinois. But aside from that, always putting up a touchdown or field goal, having a lot of success there. It'll be interesting to see how SDSU is able to combat that, particularly with their relative struggles this season. They've only uh, stopped teams three out of 29 times when they get within the 20 yard line. So really important stat to look out for and see if SDSU can try to lock down and prevent USD from converting those scores. Now the SDSU passing game is pretty prolific. It's also important for both teams but how can USD combat the aerial threat that SDSU provides? Well, one of the guys I really looked to is Adam Harris. He, he makes a lot of good reads, and he also makes a lot of key pass deflections. And I think they go with him and also freshman Marcello Judge, who's come up big for the Yost throughout the season against Illinois State. He uh, chased down and stripped the ball from the running back who was about to score a touchdown. So he's prevented quite a few scoring plays, and it's a very turnover 
happy defense and they can force turnovers and a lot of that Tyson Graham converting from the secondary to the linebacker, it kind of gives them a bonus cornerback even if they're not running the nickel. So that really helps the Yotes defend the pass. Now SDSU tends to stick to passing. They rank you know, amongst one of the worst in the league in rushing. But with USD's inability to stop the run, do you think it would be wise for SDSU to push things on the ground? Well, you can't, uh, you can't change. I mean, their style of play is set up for the pass or like that. But also, I think it might be a decent idea to push it. Not necessarily go strictly to a rushing system because that's not their strength. But USD, I mean, they're literally the worst in the conference against the run. Really uh, give up a lot of yards in that respect. The passing defense is generally able to hold fairly firm. I mean, they'll give up some big plays here and there just from being a little too aggressive on defense. But if SDSU, I mean, maybe early on they can just kind of soften up that defense with rushing. I'd expect to see a little more of that, particularly early in the game, and then some deep shots a little bit well, later. Well, you have to establish a run, but I think SDSU, they can't change up their style. They're a, very, they're a pass first team. So to change your style just based on a, a opponent's weakness. I don't know if that's the way to go. I think you just got to play more to your strength rather than to the opponent's weakness. Shifting gears to USD on offense, uh, they run the option, um, a lot of quarterback and running back draws. Will that work in USD's favor against SCSU's relatively soft run defense? As long as they mix it up, because the problem with USD is they get too prone on just doing the read option time and time again, and a lot of the times they'll make the same read. So Strebler's going to have to make the read and not necessarily give it to Bama every play, but maybe keep it himself. And they also got to get the passing game going. They often go to the short pass on first or second down, which and it hasn't been working that well this season. So if they could get some more yardage on first down, then they could be in a better situation on second and third down. Yeah, and honestly, I, I mean, USD, they love to do kind of like sort of draw plays, like screen passes, that sort of stuff. I like to see them try to get away from that a little bit, particularly against, with SDSU, I mean, if they're gonna have a hard time against the rush, it's only gonna work if USD can kind of open it up a little bit and give them some room because if USD, like you said, if they just run straight up the gut, even if it's a relatively weak rush defense, all, everybody's gonna be crowded right there. Yeah, the, the defense can just load up the box mm -hmm. and, the, and they do that because they're ready for the run right at the middle. Uh, both USD and SDSU, um, have positive turnover margins, meaning they've forced more turnovers than they've given up, but they've gotten to that positive margin in different ways. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird actually. SDSU, uh, basically they've gotten to that positive margin just by limiting the turnovers like crazy. They're actually the only team in the conference with single digit uh, turnovers on the year, albeit it's nine, so it's really close, but they've been able to limit their turnovers and they forced 15 themselves, so they've got a good margin there. USD, meanwhile, just a little bit behind them, they've got a plus two margin, but They've, they've turned it over a bit more, but that, that aggressive defense, it's working out a bit. Uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Nielsen will take those turnovers and everything like that, but sometimes they'll give up some big plays by being a little too aggressive going for the strip or something like that when they should just do a sound tackle. Yeah, you'll see them give up five to ten extra yards sometimes just hacking at the ball instead of just wrapping up. But it's kind of the aggressive defense they play in the offense. USC's offense has been a little too sloppy with the ball. Strebler's made some um, poor decisions in the past against last week against Southern Illinois. The first two possessions she threw a pick and it puts the defense in a tough spot where they almost feel like they need to get a turnover to uh, swing the momentum back their way. Yeah, and in particular the USD defense here, like if they start getting in that situation where they've got a short field, they've got to try to defend, they may get more aggressive. They'll also just play more into SDSU's hands if they're in particular so good at controlling the ball and not turning it over on offense. It really just kind of goes hand in hand and overall it just continues to be the detriment of USD. USD has a bit of a reputation this year. <laughs> I mean, we call them the cardiac coyotes. Two thirds of their games have been decided by three or less points. Why do, why do you think this is? I mean, it's pretty bizarre. I mean, uh, some of the players we talked to even mentioned it, how every game seems to be either a heartbreaker or a thrilling win. And it's really hard to pinpoint it on one thing. Part of it is USD with a big lead is hard with their fast paced offense and also with their fast paced offense they're able to make up the deficit too. I don't know if it's mentality or... I think part of it comes down to the fact they've had three games go to double OT. I mean, in the end, I mean, the scores... Well, we've seen some double OT games like whether it be a touchdown the first overtime and then goes 
and one team would get a field goal and then we can't make it up or something like that. Against uh, UND, actually, USD, that happened to them where they ended up having the, the touchdown on the first play of overtime and then having the field goal and not being able to get a score themselves. But it's partially do that. And it's funny you bring up the, the weirdest to have gotten from all this. USD's four wins have been by three points every time. It's, I mean, it's kind of cool, like just from a stat geek sort of perspective, but it, there isn't like a real solid, exp the best explanation I can come for is with those overtime games, you're having so many of them going overtime, it kind of lends itself to one score situation because it has to be one score to win it in that case. But then for the other six games, it's just kind of been freakish that way. I mean, Western Illinois, that was a tight one, ended up uh, giving up the, the comeback on that one. And uh, just some of the games where teams just randomly would have the point total end up that way. You spoke a little bit about offensive pace. USD runs a very fast-paced offense. I mean, that can affect a game positive and negative. What sort of effect can we expect to see in the game from both teams? Well, since USD runs such a fast-paced offense, it can actually negatively affect USD's defense because USD's average scoring play, or scoring drive, excuse me, is two minutes long. So even when they succeed, the defense has to come right back out. And we've seen a few games this year where USD has back-to-back -back free and outs. So you're giving the defense a minute or two of rest, and then they have to go right back on the field. And with SDSU's methodical pass it out offense, that could really hurt them. So USC's got to establish some drives this week. There's more than a rivalry riding on this game. The winner gets key positioning in the conference standings. That plays an impact for both teams, but do you think it's more important for USD? Because you know they're right in the thick of competition for that last playoff seed. You could definitely make that argument. USD is playing with everything to lose, but they're also, they don't have SDSU doesn't have as much writing on this game. Yes, SDSU is going for a conference title, which is possible since they beat NDSU, but for USD, it's their whole season on the line. And if they lose this one, then the NDSU game is pretty much meaningless. But they know if they can beat SDSU, that NDSU game is going to pretty much be a playing game for them for the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Currently, I mean, tied with Western Illinois and Northern Iowa, 3-3 three and three each in the conference. And particularly, this, these two games are particularly must-win games because Western Illinois, who, who beat USD in that one-point victory here in uh, Vermilion, their remaining games are against Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois, which are definitely winnable games for the Leathernecks. So USD really needs to get these wins because if, if they manage to lose to SDSU, I'm not sure, I think mathematically the tiebreaker would go toward, uh, toward Western Illinois since they beat USD. But if, even if they win, it's still not guaranteed they get into the playoffs, but there's so much more to play for there. SDSU, they just continue to sit atop the conference standings with NDSU. So you would have to think beating SDSU and NDSU, the top two teams mm -hmm. in the conference, would almost definitely get them in the playoffs because the Missouri Valley is almost like the SEC of the FCS. Being a four and four uh, Missouri Valley team is just as good as being maybe a six and two Big Sky team. So if they can beat both of these next to opponents. I really think they're in. The, the common thought last year was if they could have beat SDSU and been 6-5, and five, they would have been in. Yeah, and I mean, if they beat SDSU, the momentum they feel going into the game against NDSU, particularly with that being at home against the Bison, would be huge for the Senior University day, too, for a lot yeah. of the players. One last question for both of you. Um, we'll start with James. What's one key that USD needs to focus on to win this weekend? Well, there's different things you could turn to. You could look at pace of play, you could look at establishing the pass, but I think the biggest thing is going to be limiting turnovers. And it bit us last week. Scheffler is very athletic, can make some big plays, but sometimes he's got to make better decisions. And throwing two first quarter picks against the Salukis really changed the whole tempo of the game. And even if you look at last year's SDSU game, Sager threw a fourth quarter pick that just completely uh, one play doesn't cost a game, but that play turned the tie of the game and gave the Jacks the win here in Vermilion. So I limit turnovers because it's another thing that gets the crowd going. So USD just have to take care of the ball and make smart decisions passing the ball. Absolutely. Josh, one key for SDSU to win the game Saturday. I think SDSU needs to make uh, quarterback Chris Streveler beat them through the air. He's a huge threat on the ground, able to take off for runs of like 80 yards just randomly. It looks like he's going to get sacked and they'll just squeeze through four defenders. But if they can keep spies there and make sure he can't take off 
or at the very least clog up the running lanes for, uh, for him and Bauma, make it really difficult for them. USD tends to have a hard time. They do have big play capability in the receiving core, but they don't tend to go to that as like the first option. So if SDSU can take away uh, Strevler's running in particular, Bauma, I mean, he's had big rushing games and things like that, but it, it, definitely the home run threat being Strevler in particular, if they can take away his legs, it may be a little difficult for him to beat them through the air the entire game. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything you need to know about the game on Saturday. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh -huh. Former USD coach and player Joe Glenn gave us insight on how he views the rivalry. I think anybody in South Dakota knows that uh, when State and the U uh, line it up, it's a game for uh, bragging rights in the neighborhood, bragging rights on the campuses, bragging rights in the Connector City, Sioux Falls, uh, in and out of the, the, the hometowns throughout the state. So um, it ratchets up big time. In this game, you can pretty much throw the stats uh, out the window. Um, I'm saying that uh, even though uh, they have a high ranking and perhaps their uh, win-loss record might be a little bit better than the U's, um, I know from having played in this game three times uh, when I was here and having coached in it, uh, you can pretty much throw the stats out the window. Both teams are going to uh, play with every, all their heart and soul. Um, they're going to let the fur fly and uh, get after each other as hard as you can. And um, it's, it's pretty much a game of, uh, of will uh, against each other because everybody wants to beat your, your rival um, and in your home state and uh, send your fans home uh, with a victory. Coming up after the break, we talk to former USD player Tyler Evans about the lost years. We'll be right back. Do you plan on uh, going to the game this weekend? Yes, I do. It's going to be pretty wild. Um, my plans for the game this Saturday is probably to sleep in and then go to the game. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to be in the stands just like every other student. And I just hope that we win just like any alumni. Um, my family is coming up for the game. My brother-in-law, who graduated from here, is bringing my sister, who is a USD alumni, and my parents up to the game. So I'm going to hang out with them for the day and should be pretty good. Considering the fact that I'm in the marching band, I kind of have to. So yes, I'm going to be going. Um, I'm going with my roommates, and I'm very excited to see the Jacks kill the Coyotes. I'll be in attendance of the game, so I'll be tailgating beforehand, so it should be a good time. Well, I work, see, so I'm working, but after, I'm going to join the college experience, guys. Sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Got to get absolutely tossed, and then I'm going to go in there and root for my team the entire game. Welcome back. During the years 2004 and 2011, the Coyotes and Jackrabbits didn't face off. We call those the lost years. We sat down with former USD football player Tyler Evans to talk about playing during that time. Okay, the unique, the unique thing about my time here is my very first game I ever played was against STSU, and then we never played them the rest of my time. When you lose a rivalry like that, you search for something else to kind of replace it. The coaches will kind of hype up another another school, or you know, we might as as you know, leaders on the team. But there was nothing really that there was nothing that was was equivalent to to that experience and that feeling or that atmosphere that the USD SDSU rivalry created, and, and how we prepared for it. Um, but uh, you know, post those years, you know, post that that game. When, they, when we found out they were transitioning to Division I and we had chose not to, to make that leap, um, it was kind of sad because, you know, you were losing, you know, that, that big rivalry and, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of kids who grow up around here um, who go to USD and, and some go to SDSU and there's that little bit of a banter you can have back and forth. We kind of lost that a little bit. If I could tell the team one thing is you better beat those jackrabbits. You better beat them like they've never been beat before. The game will kick off at 2 Saturday afternoon. We'll have highlights and reaction from the game next Wednesday on Coyote Radio and Coyote News. That's a wrap on this year's Rivalry Special. I'm Devin Reiners. Have a great night. Do you plan on going to the USC-SCSU game? Oh, God, yeah. 
I don't care how much it costs, I'm going. I might, it depends on if I have to work or not. No, I have my uncle's activation ceremony for the military, so I'm going home that weekend. Yeah, I plan on cheering on our fellow Yotes. I, uh, yeah, we need this one bad. I plan on it, yeah. I uh, haven't been up there in a while, and it's be, it'd be good to go see a few friends. But, you know, there's also that in-state rivalry that you got to go and just go and support, you know, root for the Yotes there. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone to watch the kids, but otherwise I would be rooting for your Yotes. I don't, because... Eh, <laughs> don't want a minor. <laughs> Actually, I can't because I have to go to the high school uh, playoffs. I uh, absolutely, of course I do. Okay. It'll be exciting.